The movie begins with a narrator telling the story of old times when dragons and humans lived together peacefully without any disputes, but, greed made the humans want to take charge of the world and consume everything. They started destroying everything in their path. Although the dragons pleaded with them to stop their selfish act and live peacefully together, they did not listen and declared war against the dragons. An evil alchemist, Petrosius created a monster dragon called the Nettlebrand to track down and eliminate all the other dragons. Failure in controlling the monster dragon resulted in the alchemist's passing. Nettlebrand then started his hunting spree wishing to eliminate every dragon in the world. The fact that Nettlebrand was immune to their fire made all the other dragons scared so they decided to scatter, and run to save their lives. Nettlebrand then went to his creator's castle and has been residing there ever since. Many years passed and humans took over the world, forgetting about once existing special creatures. The remaining few dragons tried to stay hidden, but nothing can be kept hidden for too long. Living secretly, trying to keep their existence hidden from the world, a group of dragons lives in a forest where they have made their home. One fine day, the elders were having an important meeting led by the bottleneck about only using the fire as a means of protection in times of need and not as a toy. They get interrupted by a silver dragon named Firedrake, and a cat-like forest brownie called Sorrel, who were creeping around and listening to their meeting. Bottleneck scolds and warns them to stay out of trouble. This makes Firedrake very angry as he wants the elders to know that he is a real dragon and not just some dragon who keeps hiding in the woods and forest to stay out of anyone's sight. Firedrake visits an old dragon named Slatebeard, who has a very weak memory and falls asleep quickly. Slatebeard starts telling Firedrake about a place far up the mountains called the Rim of Heaven, a paradise for dragons where they can live however they want. But, Slatebeard falls asleep between the conversation and Firedrake doesn't get the full information about the Rim of Heaven's location, so now he has to find it on his own. He tells Sorrel about this place who seems a little upset as she thinks that forest brownies might not be welcome there, but Firedrake assures her that won't be the case. Sorrel is always found with Firedrake and she even draws Firedrake's and her picture on a tree. When Firedrake wishes to find that place, Sorrel confesses that her dad has told her the world outside is very cruel and dangerous, and that's when they hear a loud blast. It makes everyone in their group scared and creates chaos. Everyone starts suggesting different things. Some suggest hiding, and some suggest fighting, but Firedrake thinks if he flies to the higher mountains and finds the rim of heaven, he can lead everyone there. Sorrel, however, finds his idea absurd as Firedrake has never been out alone on his own. Sorrel's mother calls her back and suggests they should stay hidden to which Sorrel objects and says they should leave the valley and find somewhere else to live. Unfortunately, neither the dragons nor Sorrel's family knows any other place they can move to. When night falls and everyone falls asleep, Firedrake decides to go in search of the rim of heaven, and just before he takes off, Sorrel jumps in to join as well. Not having any prior experience in flying, Firedrake and Sorrel almost get hit by an airplane. They see a place with bright lights and realize that's the place where humans live. Although it is dangerous for them to go down there, a pixie once told Sorrel about a thing called, the internet, which knows everything. They think it might also know something about the rim of heaven, so they decide to try it. In the human world, a young boy named Ben steals a pearl necklace from a jewelry shop. The owner runs after him but loses him in the crowd of people who have gathered for the premiere of a movie outside a cinema. The movie is called, how to Tame Your Dragon and everyone has gathered in the costume of a dragon around the superstar of the movie. Meanwhile, Sorrel and Firedrake land on an abandoned factory's rooftop, where they find a mattress and a poster of the movie. Ben, the boy who stole the necklace lives there, and when he comes back, he finds Firedrake there. At first, he thinks it might just be a human wearing a costume, but upon checking, he discovers it to be a real dragon which scares him. When Firedrake talks, it scares Ben more as he has never seen a talking dragon before. Firedrake asks Ben about him as he looks similar to the boy in the poster of How to Tame Your Dragon. He lies and calls himself a dragon rider, which makes Firedrake think that he must also know about the Rim of Heaven. Sorrel warns Firedrake to maintain his distance from the humans as they only lie, but Firedrake doesn't listen and asks Ben to climb on his back and help them find the Rim of Heaven. Being chased by the police, Ben sees this as the perfect opportunity to escape, so he hops over Firedrake's back and they escape the police. This stunt that Firedrake pulled can put him in danger as everyone witnesses him flying. Up in the sky, when Ben finds out about their plan to get to the other side of the world, he insists on landing back as he doesn't know anything about the place they are finding. However, when they part ways with him, three coal miners find Sorrel and Firedrake, who questions them about the Rim of Heaven. They say according to the stories, the Rim of Heaven is where the East meets the West. According to a prophecy, the Rim turns everything into gold. Eavesdropping this conversation and finding out about gold, 
Greedy Ben jumps in to go with Firedrake, and Sorrel in search of the Rim of Heaven. Meanwhile, one of the coal miners turns out to be a spy for Nettlebrand and rushes to inform him about the dragon he just saw. Nettlebrand seems to be in his castle with his slave called Twigleg trying to find him a match on a website. He describes himself as a 500-year-old violent dragon who eats his creator. Just then the coal miner arrives and informs him about the silver dragon he just saw. While Sorrel and Ben fight with each other, Firedrake sees Nettlebrand approaching them. They escape just in time, but Nettlebrand makes Twigleg follow them. Firedrake, Sorrel, and Ben get caught in a huge sandstorm and crash into a desert. Firedrake falls unconscious under rubble, and when Sorrel and Ben find him, they get chased by a strange giant bird. Ben asks Firedrake to use his fire to save them, but he fails. Out of nowhere, a man called Professor Greenbloom saves them by showing that bird its appearance in the mirror, and it freezes him. The professor is amazed by witnessing a silver dragon, but Ben offends Firedrake by calling him useless for not being able to breathe fire. This makes Firedrake very upset, but Ben apologizes for offending him. Firedrake tells him he has to find the rim of heaven before the humans attack his people before the next full moon. The boy tells him that not all humans are bad, there are some good humans too, and turns out Firedrake considers him one of the good ones. They all head back to the professor's camp and discover that he collects and takes care of all the strange creatures. They plan out their path to the rim of heaven on a map and decide to leave the next day. On the contrary, they are followed by Twigleg who informs Nettlebrand about the Firedrake's whereabouts and his next move. Nettlebrand decides to go after Firedrake and uses the super submarine that was formed by the humans. Back in the desert, Ben dreams about the car crash that eliminated his parents, the story he has kept hidden from the others, but the professor finds a piece of paper belonging to him that has the news of his parents' car crash. When he wakes up, the professor indirectly suggests he forget the past and move forward and contact him if he ever needs something. Before they resume their journey, Twigleg sneakily hides in Ben's bag and they take off. The journey is navigated by Ben and they stop at several places to rest. In the meantime, they also get chased by a giant man, a water snake, and it is an action-packed journey. When they stop to rest for a bit, a huge bird attacks Sorrel and captures her. Firedrake goes after the bird and surprisingly breathes fire, which he has been failing until now and just like that he saves Sorrel. Seeing Firedrake and Ben become good friends, Sorrel becomes upset, but soon after she finds a valley down the hill. All three of them go down there and realize it's where the mighty Jin is. The professor told them the mighty Jin has the answers to everything therefore, they decided to come here. Searching for the Jin, Ben finds a car whose horn he honks upon which the mighty Jin appears. He commands them to ask a question, but also warns that if the question they ask has been asked before, he will hunt them all down. Being sharp-minded, Den asks him the opposite of the question they had to ask about the rim of heaven to which the Jin shows Ben glimpses of the rim of heaven, but due to Sorrel's one wrong question about a way out of this valley, he attacks them. That's when the Nettlebrand jumps in and throws the Jin away. Both of them get into a fight and Firedrake escapes Nettlebrand once again. Ben seems to have lost his mind after his encounter with the Jin so, Sorrel takes over navigation. They land in a village belonging to some Indians in search of a lady called Subisha Gulab, who was recommended by Professor Greenbloom. The villagers are stunned and amazed to see the silver dragon along with the dragon ride. They request the villagers to take them to Subisha. When they meet Subisha, she takes them to a temple they call the Temple of a Dragon Rider. Subisha narrates the story of the only dragon rider who knew about the Rim of Heaven. She says his name was Varen, when the dragons were attacked by the Nettlebrand he helped and rescued as many dragons as he could. Varen kept them all safe in the Rim of Heaven and protected them with strong powers, but unluckily he got chased by the monster who stole his key. Subisha's husband interrupts them with some Indian food, but she shoos him away. Meanwhile, they catch the spy Twigleg from Ben's bag, and before Sorrel could snatch his eyes he begs for a chance to prove himself worthy by misguiding Nettlebrand. He was about to be successful in misguiding him, but due to Subisha's husband's interruption, Nettlebrand finds out about Twigleg's lie and discovers that they are in India. Subisha asks them to hurry and find the rim of heaven before Nettlebrand does, but Ben doesn't remember what the djinn made him see, so she helps him with some magic. Ben suddenly remembers he saw a mountain peak which Subisha says is called the Crown Peak and they must go. Before they could leave, the map gets stolen by Nettlebrand's bird, so now they will have to find the Crown Peak without any map. Subisha tells Ben he is the Dragon Rider, so he will know where the Crown Peak is, he just needs to listen to his heart. They take Twigleg with them and take off for the Crown Peak. Back at the valley, the other dragons conclude that both Firedrake and Sorrel have been captured by the humans so they declare war against the humans and order to gather the troops. Meanwhile, Ben guides them correctly toward the Crown Peak but gets struck by a snowstorm. After escaping the storm, 
They get chased by the Nettlebrand and succeed in escaping him as well by throwing him down the mountain, but he survives. However, when they reach the rim of heaven, they find it empty and not how they imagined. Having no more time, Ben asks them to leave before they get chased by the Nettlebrand again, but Firedrake refuses, so Ben leaves them there. On his way, Ben sees Nettlebrand and hides from him when he witnesses the silver stone turned into gold proving the prophecy about the rim of heaven correct. Back in the rim, Nettlebrand turns into gold, and Firedrake decides to fight him in the name of all dragons, for once and for all. Nettlebrand however, throws Firedrake against the wall, that's when Ben arrives and screams to tell him about the prophecy. Ben says Firedrake can use his fire to eliminate the Nettlebrand now that he has turned it into gold, but Sorrel says he can only breathe fire when Ben is on his back. Twigleg tries to distract Nettlebrand by appearing as a female dragon on his matchmaking app, and meanwhile Ben convinces Firedrake that he doesn't need him to breathe fire, he needs to try it on his own. Nettlebrand gets back to them after his few moments of distraction, and just when he is about to eat Ben, Firedrake breathes fire and melts down Nettlebrand into a fine dust of gold. Sorrel then discovers the key to the rim which was stolen by Nettlebrand. They place the key where it belongs and it opens a door to a very beautiful place, the actual rim of heaven where the dragons are safe and happy, flying free. Firedrake offers Ben to live with them at the rim, but he decides to go back and drop by Professor Greenbloom's place with Twigleg. Firedrake realizes it's the full moon, and he must head back to lead his family and friends to the rim of heaven. At his valley, the elders are about to start the battle against humans when Firedrake and Sorrel arrive and stop them in time. They tell them about the rim of heaven and their story. They explain how not every human being is bad. Just like that all of them leave for heaven made for dragons only, away from every danger, safe and happy, while Ben lives his happy life with Professor Greenbloom and his family.